We all know that World War II lasted for six years. But have you ever heard of a warrior who continued to fight for an astonishing 30 years, refusing to admit defeat? His name was Hiru Onoda, and he remained oblivious to the war's end, steadfastly refusing to surrender. Today, we'll delve into this incredible tale. Hiro Onoda could well have become the embodiment of duty. On a hot morning of March 10, 1974, just nine days shy of his 52nd birthday, a trim, elderly Japanese man emerged at the police station on the Philippine island of Lubang. He was dressed in a semi-rotted uniform of the Imperial Army, fully equipped with a functional Arasaka Type 99 rifle, 500 rounds of ammunition, several hand grenades, and a samurai sword. With a ceremonial bow that left the policeman gaping in astonishment, he gently laid down the old rifle. I am Second Lieutenant Hiro Onoda. I obeyed the order of my superior who instructed me to surrender. For a whole thirty years, this Japanese man, unaware of his country's capitulation, continued to fight in the jungles of the Philippines with his squad. In those thirty years spent in the jungles, his temperature only rose twice, and he was wounded once. Otherwise, he remained perfectly healthy. He set a record for the 20th century, fighting for three decades straight. The saga of the Japanese officer's multi-year adventures in the Philippine jungles began on December 17, 1944, when his battalion commander, Major Taniguchi, ordered 22-year-old 2nd Lieutenant Onoda to lead a guerrilla war against the Americans on Lubang. We are retreating, but this is temporary. You will go to the mountains and carry out ambushes, plant mines, blow up warehouses. I forbid you to commit suicide or surrender. It may take three, four, or five years, but I will definitely return for you. This order can only be revoked by me and no one else. Soon after, American soldiers landed on Lubang, and Onoda, breaking up his guerrillas into cells, retreated into the island's jungles with two privates and Corporal Shimada. In February 1945, the Americans landed on the island, and the Japanese garrison was annihilated. Onoda didn't know what happened to soldiers from other cells. In October 1945, he found an American leaflet that read, Japan surrendered on August 14th. Come down from the mountains and surrender. Second Lieutenant hesitated, but at that moment he heard gunfire nearby and understood. The war was still ongoing. The leaflet was simply a ruse to lure them out of the forest, but they would outsmart the enemy and go even deeper into the island. My father fought against him, and then I became a policeman and also fought with the Onoda unit. It seemed like it would never end, recalls former deputy sheriff of Lubang, Fidel Elamos. We combed the jungles over and over and couldn't find them, and then at night the samurais would shoot us in the back. We dropped fresh newspapers for them to see that the war had long ended, sent letters and photos from relatives. I asked Hiro later, why didn't you surrender? He said he was sure the letters and newspapers were fake. I remember when Onoda showed us his hideout in the jungle. It was clean, with slogans in hieroglyphs, war until victory, and a portrait of the emperor cut out of banana leaves hung on the wall. While his subordinates were still alive, he conducted training with them, as well as contests for the best poems. Year after year, Hiro Onoda fought in the jungles. His soldiers set fire to the rice gathered by the Filipinos, sometimes staging shootouts. But in 1950, the nerves of one of the privates gave out. He went to the police with his hands up. Four more years, and Corporal Shimada was killed in a shootout with the police on Gontin Beach. Second Lieutenant and the last private, Kazuka, dug themselves a new underground hideout in the jungle, invisible from the air, and moved there. The Americans dropped leaflets over the jungle urging surrender. Onoda didn't believe the leaflets. After a few years, Lieutenant Onoda was actively sought after by the Japanese themselves. From time to time, those hiding in the jungle heard people speaking in their native language. They heard their own names, but they were convinced that the Americans were using captives for their propaganda. Then, among the leaflets, letters from their families started to appear. Onoda received a letter from his older brother along with family photographs. He decided that this time the Americans had outdone themselves. But why? Why put in so much effort to smoke out three Japanese soldiers from the jungle? 
This reinforced Onoda's belief that the mission he was carrying out was of special importance, as the enemy was trying at all costs to neutralize his group. Upon returning home, Suzuki devoted all his efforts to finding Major Taniguchi. He found him with difficulty. The chief of the Last Samurai had changed his name and become a bookseller. They both came to the agreed place in the jungles of Lubang. There, dressed in military uniform, Taniguchi read the yellowed order from the 8th Division to Onoda, to surrender. After listening, 2nd Lieutenant slung his rifle over his shoulder and, staggering, headed towards the police station, tearing the half-rotten insignia from his uniform. His samurai sword was returned to him as a sign of recognition. I spoke with him shortly after his surrender. This man took a long time to recover. Onoda experienced a terrible shock, explains Imelda Marcos, widow of the then president of the Philippines. When they told him that the war ended in 1945, his eyes just went dark. How could Japan lose? Why did I care for my rifle like it was a little child? Why did my men die? He asked me, and I didn't know what to say. He just sat there and cried. Demonstrations erupted in the country demanding to put Hiro in prison because 30 soldiers and policemen were killed and 100 were injured during his 30-year war. But my husband decided to pardon 52-year-old Onoda and allowed him to leave for Japan. Thirty years ago, the Japanese, who value loyalty and devotion, were captivated and deeply moved by the story of the returning lieutenant. Although many called him a symbol of militarism that doomed Japan to such suffering. However, the return itself did not bring joy to the lieutenant who had looked at the Japan overgrown with skyscrapers with fear and amazement. At night, he dreamed of the jungles where he had spent so many decades. Washing machines and trains scared him, and jet planes and televisions shocked him. And Onoda behaved unexpectedly again. He refused to meet the Prime Minister, to visit the Imperial Palace. In 1976, he left for Brazil, bought a ranch, and raised cattle. Over 10 years in Brazil, he managed to create a ranch covering 1,200 hectares with 1,800 head of cattle. In addition to this, in 1978, Onoda founded the Japanese Society of Brazil and served as its chairman for eight years. In 1984, Onoda returned to Japan and founded the public organization School of Nature to educate a healthy young generation. The reason for its creation was the news of a Japanese boy killing his parents in 1980. Onoda was concerned about the degradation and criminalization of Japanese youth, so he decided to help by using the experience he gained in the jungles of Lubang, spreading knowledge about how resourcefulness and ingenuity helped him survive in the jungle. His main goal for the new organization was the socialization of young people through an understanding of nature. Since 1984, under Onoda's leadership, the school has been organizing annual summer camps for children and their parents throughout Japan, providing assistance to disabled children, and conducting scientific conferences on education. For his successful work with young people, Onoda was awarded the Social Education Prize by the Ministry of Culture, Education and Sports of Japan in November 1999. In addition, in June 2000, he worked as a lecturer at Hokuraku University, and in April 2001, he worked as a lecturer at Takuseku University. In 1996, Onoda visited Lubang again, where he donated $10,000 to the local school. On December 6, 2004, Onoda became the first Japanese to be awarded the Santos Dumont Medal, the highest award of the Brazilian Air Force for civilians. He passed away on January 16, 2014 in Tokyo, just two months shy of his 92nd birthday.